best way to collect work from your students, whether it's a paper, a slideshow, a spreadsheet, a video, or really any file that's created and saved on a computer, is through the assignment tool. Assignments are created in a content area. In this course, we're going to create an assignment that is due in the second week. So we're going to go into the modules space uh, and then choose module 2. You can tell that these are content areas because of the buttons that appear across the top of the screen. Build content assessments, tools, partner content. Assignment is a type of assessment, so we're going to point to assessment and then choose assignment. Now when you create an assignment, you're creating a column in the Grade Center in addition to a submission space that the students will be uploading their file into or, or typing their response into. That is reflected in, for example, the name of the assignment. We call this Week 2 Reflection. That's Week 2 Reflection then will be what the students see on their My Grades page and also what appears as the default title of the column in the Grade Center that I'll be looking to to grade this assignment. I can change the colors I can with uh, many things. Uh, in this case I'm going to go with a red CC apply. Now we have a nice dark hard red label in the instruction space. I put in whatever the instructions are for the assignment. If I have a file that I want to attach and have the students refer to as part of doing the assignment, maybe I have a worksheet that I want them to complete, maybe I have a, a sample that I want them to look at, maybe I have a case study that I want them to read, I can browse my computer here and locate the file on my machine and attach it just like I would attach a file to an email. Uh, I can place a due date here uh, for the assignment. Due dates are handy because they appear in the student calendar as well as on the assignment itself. Uh, if a student chooses to, they can have the Blackboard calendar synced to their phone, uh, tablet, uh, personal Gmail calendar, what have you, uh, for reference outside of Blackboard. Uh, so putting in the due date here uh, can be very helpful. It's also helpful because, as you say here, submissions are accepted after this date but are marked late. So if something is turned in late, you get a, a, an alert that lets you know that it was turned in late. Pay attention to this date. Points possible. Again, we're creating a column in the grade center as well, and so points possible are required. If I have rubrics uploaded, I can choose a rubric, or I can create a new rubric, or I can copy an existing rubric and uh, make some changes to it and then use that changed version. Uh, you can also have multiple rubrics on uh, assignments. Now here, under Submission Details, under Assignment Type, the default is Individual Submission, so that means that each student submits the assignment. But you could also, if you have groups set up inside the course, you can choose Group Submission and then select what groups would be submitting to this assignment space, and then any one student in the group can submit for the whole group. Here, under Number of Attempts, uh, the default is Single Attempt, that means a student can open the assignment upload their file or type in their answer, click Submit, and that attempt is completed, and they can only do that once. If they click Submit and they didn't mean to, you'll need to go in and clear the assignment. Um, you can do multiple attempts and then say, well, you get three shots, and after that you're done, uh, or unlimited attempts, and they can um, upload as many times as they want. In the Grade Center, you'll see a list of all of their attempted submissions and the dates that they were submitted, and you could say, uh, I'll only look at the most recent submission or, or something like that to narrow down the students. Uh, it can be easier to manage the students if you choose to go with unlimited attempts, uh, just because if uh, the students do submit an error, you don't have to do any sort of uh, management clearing those attempts that they can get back in and resubmit. Score attempts using uh, if you allow for multiple attempts and you actually grade multiple attempts, uh, you can choose to have the last graded attempt be the, the grade that is counted on the grade center, the highest grade, the lowest grade, the first grade, or the average of them all. So if you do have them do say, you can upload this paper five times and I will look at it and uh, provide you with a change in the grade depending on whether you've improved or not, um, 
you can use these options to say, okay, but the average of all of your graded attempts is what's going to result in your grade for the assignment, or only the most recent one is going to count. Uh, the last option here uh, under submission details is uh, the plagiarism tools, the safe assign uh, tool. Do you want to do a plagiarism check? Uh, if you want to do a plagiarism check, check that box. And what Blackboard will do is submit and scan the file uh, for mat text matches in a number of databases uh, on the web, uh, in a number of uh, journal article databases, and then also in a institutional database of all of the other submissions that have been submitted through SafeAssign. So if you have an assignment that you give every time you teach this class and you use SafeAssign, each time you submit the assignment, uh, each time a student submits the assignment, their paper goes into the database and then next year's students get compared against this year's students' uh, assignments to see if there are any duplicates. So it reduces students' ability to say, you know, hey, I took that class last term why don't you turn in my paper, uh, take my paper, make a couple changes, and then you don't have to do all the work. Um, this checkbox here allows students to see their Safe Assign originality reports. If it's not checked, then only you will have access to those reports. Uh, and this exclude submissions box means that they don't get added to that database we were just talking to of all of the submissions in the school. That's an important one to, to, to select if you want to have the students submit a draft of a paper that then they're going to submit a final version later and you want them to be able to see uh, their originality reports. You want them to be able to see what they may be doing that that's not the right way to um, build a paper. Uh, they could see their originality report, or you could see just the originality report, but it wouldn't be marked, their final version of the paper wouldn't be marked as entirely plagiarized because it's already been submitted into the system. So for the draft, I would say exclude submissions, and then when I create a separate space for the final version of the paper, I would not exclude the submission, and that way this, the, the student's paper gets added into the database and for comparison for next year's students. Under grading options, you can choose to hide the students' names during the grading process by checking this box. Uh, or you can pass off um, the grading for uh, an assignment to uh, someone else inside the course. So if you have multiple graders for a class, um, you can choose who is assigned to grade what. Uh, last is the display of grades column. This is a uh, some functionality that we may recognize if we've created a column inside the grade center. Uh, you have the option to display the grade as a score, letter, text, percentage, complete, incomplete, and to even have a secondary. So you may say uh, that the first display is percent and then uh, score. So they'd see they got 100% and then in parentheses after that, 10 points. Um, do you want to include the uh, score in the grade center grading calculation? So will it be included as part of the total and that sort of thing? Um, and uh, for most items that you're adding, you'll want to say yes. Uh, but there may be some uh, cases in which uh, you are, it's a practice assignment or, or something like that, where you don't want to include it as part of the grade center calculations. Do you want the students to be able to see the score? Uh, and you want the students to be able to see the statistics for the item, the average and the median uh, on their My Grades page so they can see how well they're doing compared to the other students. Finally, do we want to make this assignment available, yes or no? And then if we do select yes and make it available, we can say display it after this date, display it until this date, and you can put in times, and then check to track the number of views if you want to be able to see how many folks have opened the assignment, when have they looked at it, and that sort of thing. Once you've got your assignment all set up the way that you want it, just click Submit. And that creates, at the bottom of the page, your assignment space, and then the students can click on the assignment label to open the submission space, and you see here they see the due date, points possible, the instructions, if there was a um, any files uploaded that they would need to download and look at, they would appear here. 
Uh, and then they have two ways to submit. One is to click this write submission and type or paste their response into this space. Uh, or more often browse the computer, locate the file on their, their desktop or uh, on a thumb driver or what have you. Um, it's important when you're uh, giving the students the instructions for this to be clear uh, up front whether you want them to attach a Word file or write uh, their response inside uh, the this text submission space. I imagine for most things you'll want them to attach a Word file, but if you have something that's short, a paragraph, say, you may have them just write it into this space. Either way, uh, your assignments, can, the students' submissions can be graded online through the Grade Center. Uh, the students can make some comment to you uh, and then submit their file or save a draft of their file, which means you won't see the submission. Um, but they can come in later and make some changes or upload more files uh, before they click submit. That is how to use the assignment tool. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, after you've created an assignment and when you're ready to start grading, um, you should look uh, on the site for the uh, grading assignments tutorial, which walks you through the whole grading process, scoring items online, collecting them, and downloading them. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact the Instructional Design Studio or leave a comment on this post. Thank you.